I'm here with uh, Michael Mayer, yep. the director of Out in the Dark, his debut feature film, and the star of the film, Nicholas Jacob. So starting off, I, I noticed that you grew up, you were born in Israel, right. and you then went to school in Southern California? Yes. Yeah. So actually, I was born and raised in Israel um, and moved for college to Los Angeles to go to film school okay. and just kind of stayed, kind of liked it there. That made me curious, What going back to Israel then for your first film, what kind of started that process? What were the origins of creating this film? Well, the origins were basically a dinner with a friend uh, years ago, I mean, you know, a few years ago. Uh, somebody that was visiting from Israel, just passing through Los Angeles for like one evening, we went to dinner and he told me that he'd be uh, volunteering with a gay and lesbian center in Tel Aviv and kind of introduced me to the whole thing about gay Palestinians hiding in Tel Aviv and, and uh, that whole deal, um, which I thought was really interesting. And, you know, I was moved because I, you know, as an Israeli or ex-Israeli, whatever you want to call it, I, I was unaware of this. You know, this was news to me. And, um, and it really kind of moved me to learn that there's people from both sides of the conflict that are working together and collaborating, you know, that because of their shared experiences as being gay. Um, so that kind of, you know, that was a kernel that, that started it. Um, the choice to go to Israel and film was not easy, you know, just take, you know, First of all, shooting anywhere, you know, leaving Los Angeles, leaving home and going somewhere to shoot for six months, you know, it's, it's never easy. But, you know, going back home had a lot of, like, you know, <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of baggage there, I think. It was, it was, I had a great experience working there and shooting, I think. Um, the crew was great, the production was great. I mean, professionally it was great, but I think just being back home, you know, not just visiting for a couple of weeks, but just being back home and over there, it was, uh, it was tough. Yeah, definitely. Oh, sure. It was emotional. So, then there's nothing innately autobiographical about. There's nothing about that's speaking to your personal experience that's in the film. Well, besides cool. being gay, growing up in Israel. Well, of course there is. Um, you know, I'd rather no, not, that's okay. not exactly. share too much. But yeah, it is it, not completely. But of course, there's personal experience there. Okay. I mean past dating and yeah definitely uh, and then casting Nicholas how did that process come about I mean his girlfriend at the time showed up to audition for a part in the movie which I guess she ended up not getting but before she left she was like by the way if you're looking if you're still looking for a guy I think my boyfriend's gonna be great uh, my casting director you know it, it wasn't easy finding there's a lot of very good uh, you know, Palestinian and Arab actors in Israel, but um, we were looking for somebody relatively young in their early 20s, and most people are not even through acting school at that time, you know. Um, so it was, you know, we're struggling with finding a role. We had a couple of candidates, but, you know, my casting director did not want to turn down the opportunity to see another person. And we said, yeah, absolutely, we're, you know, we have some, you know, we have some time, a window, like a 15 minute window on a Friday or whatever. And he showed up and he was great. He kind of, blew us away, and then 15 minutes later, like, the, the other lead, Michael, was supposed to come in, and we asked Nicholas if he, if he didn't mind, like, waiting and maybe reading with the other guy, and then once we got the both of them in the room together, it, it was pretty obvious, like, within, like, five minutes, we were like, okay, they have, a, they have great chemistry, um, and, and he actually, I feel, I, he, I keep saying he, Nich Nicholas was actually, I felt that he was improving with the other actor, with Michael. Okay. Know, they were working together. Like, he was good in his audition, but once he had another actor to kind of, you know, work with, he was he was even getting better. So I, I saw, like, a lot of potential there. Yeah. And, uh, so, has, sorry, has acting always been an aspiration of yours, or...? Actually, um, the stage has been, because I come from a musician background, I, I did perform with music before, I, I always wanted to try out acting, uh, I never thought of doing it, because, you know, it's not the safest of careers to take, mm -hmm. <laughs> to take on and just flow with it in, in your life, and I always wanted to I always wanted, I always had the dream to fly. I always wanted to become a pilot, actually. Okay. And, uh, 
uh, th this opportunity came uh, came by, and I I decided, okay, I I want to I want to try. I I need to try, and uh, I went for it. And uh, <laughs> when I was back, actually riding back uh, to Haifa for uh, the in the train, uh, no, this was in Tel Aviv. The Tel Aviv, yeah. So I was like riding back. I I I had the feeling that it went pretty good, and I was like. Uh, <laughs> Thinking, okay, you're 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 getting into something new here, and it it was pretty pretty an amazing process for me. Was it difficult to play a gay character? Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, especially, but 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 it wasn't easy not because of the gay thing, but but because it was my first time actually. Sure. It was a whole new experience for me. I I didn't come from an acting background, and and we were we worked pretty hard. Uh, in order to make this possible uh, five weeks before we started shooting. Um, I did a part about the gay, about the, uh, gay part. It, it was actually, it's always hard to get intimate with a person that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I had the same, I had the same difficulties with a, with a woman afterwards in another part that I did in another movie. It wasn't easy because you know, once you get to know the person. You need to get intimate right, the, uh, right on the on the spot, and you know, in front <laughs> yeah. of a camera, in front of people. It's it's never that easy. It doesn't matter if it's I think a guy or or, or a woman. It's always the intimate issue. I mean, it's yeah, so cr like you you mean like creating intimate like, creating intimacy intimate, with, yeah, with, with, with another true, actor. True true intimacy. That's I mean, the feels yeah, that that yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It's not it's not an easy task, I think. It doesn't matter what Jenner is uh, is standing in front of you. Okay. It seems to fit in with a wave of um, other stories coming out of concerning the Israeli Palestinian conflict. Um, but nothing that's quite explored this angle of it. Okay. There's Israeli cinema, like there's uh, Yossi and Yeager, both okay. Israeli soldiers, okay. and um, Eyes Wide Open. Right. There's another 2009 film. Uh, yeah, with two orthodox. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. But no, no, these are coming from both sides. Okay. And so, I guess I'm just wondering, uh, there's kind of a personal versus political angle going on here, and right. how much of that message uh, was purposeful going into the film? Um, I think, or I was hoping I could create something that, that was balanced. It wasn't, you know, just an issue film. It wasn't just preaching or trying to speak for a community, but, um, but at the same time, not just doing a family melodrama or a love story, but kind of, um, you know, enjoying the fact that, you know, this particular narrative happens in such a charged reality. And um, and try to keep that balance, hopefully, in the movie. So it doesn't come off as like a political, you know, rise, you know action, you know, rise to action, uh, rise to movement, whatever, you know, yeah. like an yeah. activist <laughs> piece, but at the same time, like, not give up the, pol you know, the political angle of it. So, um, so still be centered around the human drama, which would, would originally drew me to the story. I mean, basically, it's a story about, you know, a family being torn apart and, you know, two lovers, you know, dealing with the impossibility of their relationship. But placed within this charged reality, it gets, you know, another level to it. You know, the story gets, a, a, a diff, you know, more of a depth to it. Well, so hopefully I'll be, I was able to establish Yeah, both. no, no, I think so. It's okay. just, um, you know, there's just a lot of uh, interesting things that come up in your film. Like, with the... You know, the gay angle is, you know, what did one character say? A, a dick is a dick. Right. Um, the, their interactions with each other aren't dictated by these same cultural mores, per se. Like, okay. there's a little more malleability, I guess, there's, okay. with how they can act. Um, and there's another film called The Other Son that's about to be released. Okay. Where uh, um, baby switched at birth kind of scenario. Okay. But also the ways to okay. show kind of the human stories that go on in the conflict that aren't all right. issue films, which I think your film does. Uh, what are your overall film influences, like becoming an aspiring filmmaker? Um, I mean, there's one scene that I, 
obviously it's you know I ripped off, but I mean it's an <laughs> it's an homage to you know an homage to um, to Nicholas Rogue, uh, Don't Look Back, the pool scene in the movie, that's intercut. You know they're talking in the pool while they're getting undressed, and there's yes, a yes. there's a Nicholas Rogue movie called Don't With Look. Donald back. Sutherland and, no, and Julie Christie. Pool, where it, yeah, the, where the it's pool like scene shimmers over the. Uh, yeah, they're like they're having sex while they're getting yes, undressed, yes. and it's intercut. So obviously, you know, that that is okay. an obvious influence. Yeah, but, okay. But you know, the just one scene. But apart from that, like, did, what do you think? Like, well, as before, I said, okay. I, it felt uh, it, it did feel like a Western filmmaker. Like I felt, okay. You know, I did. I can't say it reminded me of anyone's style in particular while I was seeing it, but it did feel. Um, just differently constructed with some of the cinema I've seen coming out of Israel. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And that, um, could have just, that could have been just knowing that, that you know, I know that you've been living in the oh, States for okay. some time. That could be um, well, we did, uh, my editor is, is American. You know, we, we did yeah, post in the U.S. Yeah, the way the film is placed together. Right. Yeah. The, the um, but before, before shooting, before, you know, while, and even while I was writing, um, Specifically because of the subject matter, and also because I knew a lot of the film, thema you know, thematically, you know, dealt with some dark issues, but also, you know, a lot of it happens at night. Yeah. Um, I watched. I'm a big fan of Gordon Willis. He's a cinematographer. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's called the Prince of Darkness. So, you know, he shot The Godfather. He shot. I he, just watched yeah. Windows. Okay. It's the only directorial debut. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is it any good? It is, but it's very, uh, like, he's going for depths of darkness kind of feel. Okay. And that was kind of a gay exploitation film. Really? Okay. Um, I need to check it out. It was a lesbian angle. But yeah, even, okay. but yeah, I could see that. So, the th I, I watch specifically Clute a lot. Yeah. And his the three movies he did with Alan J. Pacula. It's like Clute, um, All the President's Men, and um, what's the third one? The Parallax View. So, it's they're all kind of like... You know, paranoia, early '70s films, I guess. Um, but I love, I love, you know, how how he plays with light, and it's not necessarily like I, I don't know if there are influences, but I, I watch them a lot when we were, you know. But I think influences is is tough because I remember when I was writing, when we were writing, um, Yael and I were writing the whole opening sequence, the whole opening sequence of the meeting, and you know, and spending some time that first night together, you know, uh, Nima and Roy. You know, and hanging out, walking the streets, you know, like having a conversation outside the club. I kept hearing this Prince song, Take Me With You, from, you know, the, I think it's the second one in Purple Rain. But okay. I mean, that's an, inf you know, that's an influence, it's not a cinematic influence necessarily, but I think a lot of what we consume, music, film, TV, like influences us. So oh, yeah, know, definitely. Yeah, so in that sense. But yeah, specifically movies that I felt like had something to do, or like I turned to before this, were, yeah, those... You know, Marathon Man was one. Uh, you know, was one that I kind of watch again. Okay. You know, shallow depth of fields. You know, dark. Yeah. Some paranoia, some thriller aspects to it as well. So. And I, the, actually, lots of the nighttime scenes in your film I thought were very well shot. Oh, actually, so well, because most of it's set. Our but, DP oh. was just like a, I mean, amazing, amazing, and the calmest, most like. You know, soft-spoken guy. It was it was great working with Ron. He was yeah. For um, people in the queer community that find it a little harder to hide, that as in transgendered individuals, or if you're a little more flamboyant, and what their option the option is to only hide in Tel Aviv, then to get out of the East Bank. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't think so. It's it it's, it is getting better, even and especially in like an urban area like Ramallah, you know, there is a little bit more openness, and it really depends what family you come from. I mean, we had people again working on the movie that are out to their fam, Palestinian guys that are out to their families back home, and their families. You know, there was one guy that he was actually his family actually kicked him out for about five years, but now he's you know renewing his relationship, and he's back home. His mother is. It's kind of it's okay. Is okay. He still is not talking to his dad, but I think it's kind of true of a lot of gay men, and, you know, and women in, in other places in the world. I mean, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I've got to okay. cut off because we got this other guy. Okay. Gonna be and by the way, the guy that plays Mustafa is another film in the festival. He's also in Zaytun. Oh, okay. Uh, guy, his name is uh, Luai uh, Nufi, and Ryan he's Nicholas? already. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. Yeah.